with a camera. Starring Charles Bronson. Edwards Air Force Base, where the United States Air Force tests its hottest aircraft, the jet-powered X-Planes. And I'm Mike Kovac, freelance still photographer, here in the middle of the California desert for a photo layout on the hottest pilot, the man on that plane right there. Major? Major Dixon? Yes. I'm Mike Kovac. Oh, yes, they told me you were coming. A picture layout on a test pilot, huh? That's right. In fact, I've already started. Got the most exciting shots first. Oh, I think you'll find the most exciting part is up there, when they release the ship from the B-50. I'm going up again in a couple of days, and you're clear to go with me. In the mother plane, that is. Oh, you had me worried for a minute. What can I do to help in the meantime? Nothing. Just let me tag along for the next couple of days. Sure. You know, frankly, I'm more interested in photographing the man than the equipment. You're a special sort of a guy, Major. The only thing special about me is my fiance. You'll have to meet her. I'd like to. Maybe I can buy my way into one of your dinner dates, photograph the two of you together. You know, tomorrow or the next day. Fine. Have to be a late afternoon dinner, though. My day starts at 4 a.m. I'd like you to leave the set up for a while. I want to get a couple more shots during dessert. With my screwy hours, we always have to eat before the crowds, Mike. <laughs> what price fame, Major? Uh, is that all? Well, I want to get a couple shots during dessert. When does the photographer eat? With the help. <laughs> oh, I'm not really hungry. Besides, I want to get you back to the base and tucked in bed first. You better hit the sack yourself. You'll make that flight with me in the morning. I have to be up by four. Well, I'll be there. Let's meet at the officers' club for coffee and then go on down operations. <laughs> it's all right. Sit down, Liz. Liz. I don't want you to fly, Sandy. Let him take pictures of somebody else. The pictures are only incidental. It's a scheduled test flight. I don't want you to go up and you know why. Please. Please, Sandy. It's my job, honey. I don't want your job. I want you. The job is part of me. Well, you see, way up there, there's hardly any atmosphere. The aircraft doesn't handle in the ordinary sense. Thrust and direction come from the rockets. Today, we're going to try a slightly different fuel composition. You going to try for a new altitude record? Well, that's not the purpose, but if it happens, it happens. This plane's already been in excess of 120,000 feet, but I still think it's got a little more in it. What do you say, Mike? They say it's going to be 110 this afternoon. We'll go for a swim, huh? Sure, darling. Would you like me to fix it up for your operations? You can uh, see them track me and listen to me talk to chase plans. Oh, no, no, I don't think so. I, I think I'll stay right here. All right. <laughs> That's fine. What's wrong with your story? 
You see, with only five minutes of fuel, it'd be impossible to test the capabilities of this ship if we had to take off from the ground. So they've adapted a B-50 as a mother plane. Now, this model's too big, but they'd tie on like so. Then I get a ride up to 30,000 feet. Then you're on your own, huh? Well, except for three chase planes, radio communications, telemetering, and space positioning. Outside of that, nothing. Except Liz? Mike, I uh, guess you think I was pretty rough on her, making her come out here. I want you to know that uh, this is for her benefit, not mine. Now, we love each other, sure, and uh, I want to marry her, but I love this, too. I want to get her fears settled now, before we're married. I've seen too many flyers put it off. Well, let's go, huh? I bet you thought these went out with the Model T, huh? Oh, no, Mike, come on. Well, it's part of the story. Joe? Yeah? One minute, Major. You know, Liz seemed a little bit worried when we left her. Well, she's got her problems, too. She's had bad luck with the men in her life. Oh, she's never been married. It's her brother and her father. See, her brother was 18 and wanted to leave school and enlist in the Marines. Well, she advised him to go ahead. He fell off a truck during training and was killed. I'm beginning to see. And then her father on top of it. She was up at college and got into some little difficulty. Stayed out too late on a date or something. Anyway, she sends her father an SOS and he comes racing up there and turns his car over on the road. So she figures her love is a curse, huh? It's become an obsession. You all set, Major? Oh, yeah, Joe. Mike, this is Joe Gar, our personal equipment man. I met Joe yesterday. How yeah. are you, Joe? This is the first tailor-made suit I've ever had, Mike. Yeah, it's got to be fitted to a quarter-inch tolerance all around. Else I don't stay in one piece up there. <laughs> I have to be nice to this guy, Mike. If he doesn't like you, <laughs> wow. Mechanics have been working for hours, getting the X-2 slung into place beneath the giant B-50. Getting the X-ship fueled with liquid oxygen and alcohol. Major Dixon even had to prepare his lungs for this flight. It is called pre-breathing. For an hour, he had to put oxygen into his system and force nitrogen out. You okay, Major? Roger. Then finally, the countdown of a long checklist was done, and the crew and I climbed aboard. But Sandy's girl waited on the ground and watched. Thousand feet, Sandy went to his X ship, hanging in the converted Bombay. 
and got into the cramped pilot's compartment. Shooting my pictures from the Bombay door, I was just above Sandy and would be directly over his line of flight when he was released from the mother ship. They lowered the plastic canopy over Sandy. Four, three, two, one. Okay. And away he went. on the ground knew that something had gone wrong. Captain Shaler wants to talk to you. It looks like Sandy's down someplace. We lost radio contact with him 94 seconds after release. The third chase plane didn't see him at the rendezvous. Still trying to raise him. Both space positioning and telemeter lost him too. What about radar? Space positioning is radar plus. They saw he was way off flight plan. He was in almost a vertical dive when they lost him. What chance has he got? He had only five minutes of fuel. No, I mean to get out. He ejected the capsule, one of the chase planes would have spotted the chute. Surely space positioning would have tracked it. Try air operations. Yeah, yeah, I'll wait. Yeah? Well, what about the choppers? All of them? Yeah. Well, let me know the minute you hear something. Good. Is there any word yet? I've got the whole rescue service, Hob. You might have landed on a dry lake. How much chance is there of that? It's a chance. These girls on the base, too. I know. Who tells her? The Air Force? Well, it's difficult. She's not next of kin, Mr. Kovac. Somebody's got to tell her. Me? You know her. I guess she's still at the officers' club. I'll get a staff card. I haven't taken you over. last night, all night, and I cried after he went up. It's getting so I can do my crying in advance. Well, come on, I'll, I'll drive you home.
Thank you very much, Mike. You've been very kind. I just can't leave you. Would you like me to do something for you? No, no, nothing. Maybe you want me to get somebody over for you, huh? Somebody you'd like me to call? Oh, no. There's, there's no one to call. Well, are you sure? I... I don't have anyone anymore. No one to call, no one to call me. You know... He always knew how worried I... I was when he was flying. So, when he landed, no matter what time or, or where he was, he'd call. But he won't call anymore. Will he? Liz, Sandy told me about you and your family. You mustn't think that this is all your fault. You're not to blame. Mike, if it happened once, it could have been an accident. Twice a coincidence, but three times. It's me. It's me. Now, I'd... I'd like to be alone. I want you to go, Mike. Well, I just can't leave you alone. All right. Uh, if you really think I need somebody, my neighbor is Mrs. Burns. She's down the hall, apartment 602. Mrs. Burns? Yes, Mrs. Burns. I don't let him know. drove Miss Howell home from the Edwards Air Force Base. Her fiancé was in an aircraft accident this morning. The Major? Yes. Was he killed? Liz? Liz? What's happened? Liz, open up! Are you afraid of what she might do? Does the manager have a pass key? No, I don't know. Please, Liz! Is there another door? No. You can look in through our apartment. It's right across the way. Liz. Unlock the door, Liz. Liz! Please, Liz, it's not your fault. You had nothing to do with it. Do you understand me, Liz? Shall I call the police? Not yet. Liz, you've got to think this over. It's not your fault. Now, please, close the windows. Kill my brother and now Sandy. I don't want to take any more lives. Well, listen. Give it 24 hours. A day. Find out. <laughs> hey, 
What is this? Tenants calling up, people hanging out of windows. Stay in there. Listen, the manager's away and I'm responsible. You stay in there. I've got to stop causing trouble. I, I, I've got to stop causing trouble. No, you're not, Liz. Liz, baby, he's alive. Don't you want to know? He needs you. Listen, I'm responsible here. I got to call the cops. Where's the phone? Don't you do that. She might try to jump. What do you think she's going to do anyway? Don't call. I guess somebody beat me to it. Listen, you go stand by her door. Don't let them break it down, you hear? We'll go. Uh, I just cause more and more trouble. Oh, no, Liz, there's just a fire someplace. No, there's no fire. It's me. It's me, and I... I don't want to cause any more trouble, Mike. Mrs. Burns? Where's your phone? In the bedroom. You know her number? Well, look it up. Or ask information. But call her and let the phone ring. Let it keep ringing. For me, Mike. There's no fire. It's me. It's it's just me. Give it a day. Just 24 hours. Maybe there's a chance. I'm I'm sorry, Mike. Liz, listen to me, please. I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> Call. Nobody would call. You told me that. It's easy to find out. electrical system failed. I didn't have any radio, so I went way off course. Oh. Oh, oh Sandy. I was so scared. Darling. You're not hurt. No, I set it down on a dry lake and waited for the helicopters to find me. Honey, I, I hope you didn't have too rough a time. <laughs> well, I... I did, but... Sandy, I'm all right now. Nothing's ever going to bother me again. It is. It's, it's all right now. I can't get this number. It's been busy since I tried. I really am. Just come home. Come home. 